Tell us what it's like right now on the ground in terms of the small businesses, and you work with so many of them, especially when it comes to trying to renegotiate rents and uh, figure out sort of a path forward. So if you think about the original PPP, the design was from Feb 15th through to the, the end of this month, the 30th of June. And at the end of the day, in my portfolio of over 50 companies, 80 percent of them were able to defer rent primarily with REITs in states like New York, Florida, Texas, and California. However, here we are on the cusp of the end of the month, and obviously, as you've been reporting, openings are sporadic and challenged and in question. And I, and I guess the best way to put your head around this is think about, um, and, the, and I ask this question of my own CEOs uh, just to motivate them. If Apple closed every single store they had, in America or never reopen them, would it in any way impede the business? And my answer is no. People would find a way to buy those products direct, as they're doing right now, Andrew. As you know, in Miami, where I'm living or was living till last week, um, we don't have that Apple store open. The same is happening with all of my small entities as they try and figure out, okay, I've lost my store in Amarillo, Texas or Chattanooga, Tennessee. I guess I'll set up a direct digital business with Shopify, partner with Facebook and maybe Walmart, and sell direct to my customer. Because here's the trick, and I think the market's kind of sussing this out. You can lose half your sales, half, which represented your retail business. And if you're able to capture that customer direct, you'll make the same cash flow. Because now you're making 100% margin instead of 50%. And remarkably, in locations like Hudson Yards, where I had stores, or Faneuil Hall in Boston, they're gone. At least we're not using them. And those companies have actually achieved better than forecast free cash flow in this last four months. This digitization in America is why the markets are buoyant. Now, what happens to landlords? I'm not feeling so good about them. Because it's not just the office space. We won't be opening any marginal retail locations when this is all over, Andrew. If we have a retail store in a third you know, C-grade strip mall, we're just not going to reopen it. And I'm not the only person saying this. So you ask me why the values of banks are impeded or why people are questioning REITs or real estate, the world's changed. It happened real fast. And on the outside of this, we've got a lot of figuring out to do in terms of the value of those assets going forward. But American business has pivoted. They figured it out. Now, not every sector, weddings, where I'm big, and gifting, where I'm big, they're decimated. We haven't married anybody in months. I don't know what's going to happen to America. Is love dead? <laughs> hey, Kev, it's great to see you. Um, on your point about the landlords, do you think that's an issue only for, like, the C and maybe even the B mall uh, landlords who are out there? If you, if you have a prime property, are you still going to be able to charge prime rates, or do you think that those rates are even going to have to come down, too? You know, Becky, that's a really a excellent question, because one of the largest institutional allocations, you know, I'm an indexer, I work in the index business, is real estate, particularly AAA prime high-rise in cities like New York and Boston, and Miami, et cetera. I was in a, a high-rise yesterday uh, in an elevator that supposedly took 16 people, and there were decals on the floor where only four could go in. And the lineup was mm -hmm. out the street. Now, I know, you know, you think about that. Um, I, I know that everybody's thinking things will get back to normal, but if, we, if, if they don't, that asset, which might have traded at a four and a half cap, is going to trade, in my view, it's a personal opinion, at a six and a half cap going forward. That's a 20 plus percent impairment to the value of that asset. And I, I will also tell you this, and it's no secret. I mean, I'm just giving it to you the way I see it every day. Many businesses are taking advantage of the pandemic as a cloak to trim a lot of employees and their jobs will never come back. And this is great for earnings in the S&P. It's not great for employment because they wanted to do this anyways, and they're doing it under the cloak of, gee, I can't open, so I'm just going to do it. Right. And as a demand factor, I think at least 15 to 20 percent of the jobs sitting in high rises will remain remote because compliance and accounting so, and logistics, you don't need those right. people Kevin. at the office. So I think values go down.
Yep. Kevin, if that's right, what do you think of the markets right now? Well, I'm quite optimistic because I just multiply what I see happen in front of me in my own portfolio in terms of margin enhancement. And I say to myself, in two years, I bet the S&P has enhanced its margins by five or six percent. I don't know what happens with the China debate. You know how I feel about China. I want to keep squeezing, right. but we've got political issues there right now. But, but I'm trying to understand how you're I weighing think the that against got the right, demand Andrew. picture. But, but, you, but you also talked about the demand well, picture here, and then this unemployment picture. And I'm trying to weigh those, those things, the margin story you're talking about and the employment story on the other end. Well, I make this assumption. 60 plus percent of our economy is consumer demand. Consumers demand has not diminished that much as I've seen across the board. You know, I have businesses in practically every sector from manufacturing gym equipment to high tech stuff. And we haven't seen any slowdown in demand. Yes, yes, maybe that happens. But right now, I think I'll be selling those businesses or I'll be selling those consumers product and enhance my margins materially by, dig by digitization, which is why when people say to me, well, how come Facebook? How about Wix? How about Amazon? How about DocuSign? Why are these, value these businesses at crazy valuations? They're not crazy valuations. They are the engine of transition. And that's why the market's buoyant.